Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. It is Offensive Line Week as the positional previews brought to you by Byers Auto continue on through this long, hot off season as we continue to wait and hope that the season is played. We're going to continue to treat it as if the schedule is unchanged. Optimism, 100%. And the offensive line will have it, you know, the maximum amount of chances to prove that they could be the best in the country. That's Spencer Holbrook. That's Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. You look at this this unit, and uh, it's it's certainly within reason, Berm, for this to be the best in America when you have three potential top two, top three round NFL draft picks, depending on where Thayer Munford winds up. Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, those three. For building blocks, you can't really ask for much more. I'm just fascinated by what could have been this year based on what uh, should be based on the guys that are returning to school. Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis were each in the top 30 or 40 picks in the NFL draft if they would have come out a year ago. Mm -hmm. Getting those guys back is your anchors, and then you have a healthy Thayer Munford, who last year he played most of the year, and you know, but there was kind of a pitch count on him. Uh, you should see that group, and then you throw in Harry Miller, uh, and then probably Nick Bl Nicholas Petit Frere at the other tackle, battling with Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones. It's amazing to see where the offensive line group uh, is now, based on where it was when Ryan Day took over in December 2019. Well, it's been a long, long process, Spencer, because 2018. I remember, sorry, when I started covering this team, and we've had dealt with Reed Fragel in here a number of times, a good friend of ours at Letterman Row. I mean, he's a guy that's converted from tight end to right tackle. And if he got hurt in that first season, there's no undefeated season. They don't. I don't even know where they would have turned. And it was that way for five, six years where Urban Meyer had really great offensive lines, but they were always one injury away from being wiped out, and that injury never happened. Now you look at this unit. Somebody goes down at guard. Somebody goes down at tackle. You've got some other options. There's some really good depth in the offensive line. I think it was really interesting. We talked to Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis a few weeks back, and they said last year at this time, they were even concerned about the depth because you didn't see the twos and the threes stepping up the way they were this spring in the three practices they got. So even, you want to talk about 2012, 2013, 2014, even last year in the spring, they weren't sure what they had depth-wise. Right. You get into the season, the twos are going in there and just dominating everybody they played just like the ones were. It was almost like the twos didn't even go in at all. So I thought it was really interesting that they made sure to point that out. Even last year at this time, they weren't as deep in the offensive line as they came to be in the fall. It's one of the reasons why I thought among the most important things Ryan Day did when he took over at Ohio State. He took over in December 2018. He and Kevin Wilson ramped up the recruitment of Dewan Jones, who they really hadn't thought much about throughout the entire process. Somehow Ryan Day went to Hawaii and got Enoch Vamahi, <laughs> uh, who he's now changed his plans and is not going on his mission so now you have a full chance to develop him and I'm you know you said it um, on June 8th when the players return to campus you're like that looks like an NFL offensive lineman and you have guys like Vamahi uh, just kind of waiting in the wings and you're like okay now the, now you got dudes that are behind dudes and that's a total change from not even when it was in 2012 but what it was in 2018 right yeah I, I think that and that's an interesting point you raise about seeing Vamahi and how significant that was for him not to leave, that there is this assumption that Harry Miller is going to be the left guard, and I completely agree with it. He's on this, you know, Pat Elfline, Billy, Billy Price, Price right. track to go from guard to center and be one of the best in America. And But I don't think that that should take away from Matthew Jones or Enoch Vamahi or Gavin Cup, some other guys that can compete, because those are, those are real guys that could play anywhere in the country you know, it's tough for them that they're going to have to wait, but the same thing is going to be true for Paris Johnson. You thought in the spring there was a good chance that he could emerge as a starting right tackle for this team ahead of Nicholas Petit Frere. I don't know if you still feel that way after the shortened, you know, spring, yeah, but. Yeah, right. Losing losing this spring and summer is huge for any of those in early enrolled freshmen that were planning on competing for that first spot. So let me walk that back and say, <laughs> I don't think at this point he's the, the day one starter as I did. Uh, back in March, but you certainly expect him to get a lot of playing time. And he's not the only one of those, the class of 2020, that could see early playing time. Josh Fryer and his flexibility gives them a lot of, of movement around the line. He can play all five positions. Luke Whipler is a guy that's going to push. Uh, and then you have technically sound guys like Jacob James. You have uh, developmental guys maybe like Grant Toutant and, and uh, Trey LaRue, but those are big bodies. Nobody would have expected Dewan Jones to play last year. Right. So you don't know what exactly happens from now to the time that they get on the field. And the Dewan one came you know, almost out of nowhere for me because you looked at somebody with that 
that size, that potential. He was so raw. Like, well, there's no way that he's going to play in year one, but three years, maybe you could, Craig Studrawa, Kevin Wilson can do something with this guy. And then you find out, well, you can just use him to block kicks. They don't redshirt him. And he starts coming along as a blocker, and is, he's got great footwork. He played basketball in, in high school and move around a little bit. He's suddenly a really interesting part of this moving forward. And he's very versatile in the sense where the first time we saw him was blocking a kick. And so you thought, well, are they going to redshirt him or are they going to use him on kick block? <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's moving guys against Northwestern. He's moving guys in late in the second half of other games. He really came on, and I think he's one of the most interesting guys to watch this entire offseason because he's. it seems like, and everybody has said, he's taking huge steps forward. And we thought he was a developmental guy. You know, Maybe in two or three years he could – compete for a job and now you're talking about him competing in year two so I think it's really interesting just the way he has developed in such a short time it shows the job Greg Stradrawa is doing with this offensive line yeah what about Stradrawa Byrne because uh, maybe a year ago at this time or uh, further back than that after coming off of the you know 18 19 season 18 season there were is is he on the hot seat is Ryan Day going to keep him he really answered the bell, in my opinion, last year. He did, and, and uh, you know we can go back again. I keep parking back to the December of 2018, but it was Ryan Day and and Kevin Wilson who went and got Dewan Jones. It was Ryan Day who went and got Enoch Vamahi. It was Ryan Day who was able to bring in Jonah Jackson from Rutgers. Mm-hmm. And there was, there had to have been, if if we're calling a spade a spade, <laughs> there had to have been a moment in in the midst of Ryan Day collecting his own staff where he had to think to himself, is this guy is Greg Studrara the guy that's going to run my offensive line? And I, I I feel confident saying that there had to have been some worry about that uh, at the time. We saw what he did, not just developmentally, but recruiting-wise a year ago, six offensive linemen. And again, maybe some of those guys are are, are you know building blocks for the future, but mm-hmm. you can't get six five-star offensive linemen in a class. It's just not the way it works. Uh, you see what he's done in 2021 so far. Another five-star and Donovan Jackson committed, and then you have Ben Chrisman. They're still working on a handful of other guys. He's definitely answered the bell, and I think that you know, back in, in Studrara's early days at LSU, Maryland, other spots he's been, the question was never about whether or not he could coach. Uh, it's about, you know, was he going to stay motivated on the recruiting trail, and you've seen that, and I, I think – that when you are recruiting well as a coach, it kind of turns into this momentum on the field as well because those things are all tied together. But um, it's a big year for him now because you, you have these question marks. Last year, I mean, it was kind of like you, you knew who the five were going to be. There was not really a, a big question. Uh, now you have to, to really figure out who's the best fit at an incredibly important position at right tackle. Uh, and, you know how to how to best manage a roster full of 11, 12 dudes that can play. Uh, I think that's a harder task than managing six guys who can play. Right, and to really bury the lead with these two guys that I think are first round picks with Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis. Spencer, you talked about you know getting a chance. They've been the only two players that we've really talked to um, at all since March when things shut down. But with all this talk about the future, these guys really get overlooked. And having Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis back. That is a hugely significant piece of the puzzle here for Ohio State. Well, and I wrote about it on Letterman Row on Monday. Well, today. Uh, they are huge. Don't give away the time frame, Spencer. <laughs> they are huge for the run game. Like, there is no – the addition of Trey Sermon was huge, but the biggest addition of the offseason for the Ohio State running game was when Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis both said they were coming back. Because when you have building blocks on the inside like that to be able to just run the ball whenever you want against anybody you want to, mm-hmm. that is huge. And it doesn't matter who the running back is at that point because those two can just move people, and they bury defensive tackles. So I think – that's something that's getting overlooked as well. Ohio State, a lot of questions in the run game, but when you have interior offensive linemen like they do, it's really, really going to be easier to run the ball. Yeah, I think that Josh Myers is going to win the Remington Trophy. I think that Wyatt Davis is going to be a top 10 pick. I think they're Munford, a healthy year. You touched on this earlier, Berm, that the last two years, really, he's never been fully healthy. Right. He admitted in the middle of last year, I think maybe it was the Wisconsin game where he was really banged up and didn't play up to his potential and, and, and said, you know, well, he's been hurt, but oh, he wasn't playing poorly enough that Ohio State felt like they needed to make a move at left tackle. Put him out there. I think he's back as a, a first or second round pick. This, I mean, you look at it on paper, it's hard to make a case that it's not going to be one of the best offensive lines in, in America. Well, I mean, uh, I think it's arguable that 
they were the best offensive line last year and they probably should have won the Joe Moore Award that went to LSU because every award went to LSU last year. <laughs> um, and I think people lack originality yeah. and creativity when voting. Like, oh, I'm just going to check off every box, LSU. Like, <laughs> like I mean, the LSU's offensive line was really good, but was it was their offense – that much better than Ohio State, or you know, did they run the ball like Ohio State? Absolutely not. So, when I think of offensive line, I think of running the ball, and nobody has run it better in the last decade more consistently than Ohio State has amongst you know the teams that actually try to run a pro style offense. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it is the best offensive line one through ten in America, uh, one through five. You know, there may be some debates out out there, but um, certainly. When I look at like the reasons why I want football to be back this year, Wyatt Davis and Josh Myers getting a chance to play this final season at Ohio State is on near the top of the list for me because I those dudes made a decision right. to to put their team ahead of their own pocketbooks, and I would hate to see them lose this year of development and this year of of adding to their resume and adding to their tape that could make them both first round picks and Josh Myers a Remington award winner and Wyatt Davis competing for the Outland Trophy and those sort of things um you know I I hope that they get that chance because those guys made a very selfless decision and you'd like to see that kind of thing rewarded they could both be sitting on huge signing bonuses right now and not care if the season happens Mm -hmm. but instead they chose to come back to Ohio State you know with no money (laughs) and play another year to not only improve their draft stock but improve the offense right volunteering to live in a hotel for five months if that's what it takes and uh, you know that's that's why sports is great, and you just hope those guys get a chance to to go out there and put it all on the line. Yeah, lots of reasons that we need to see football this year, but those are two good ones right there for Ohio State, and really that entire offensive line should be fun to watch uh, when the games get rolling again and training camp starts and practices. And we're not talking about anything else, but we're going to pretend like none of that stuff matters as these positional previews roll along here at Letterman Row. I appreciate Buyers Auto for their support of this. That's Spencer Holbrook. That's Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. We will see you next week for the next in the positional previews. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.